Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Keisha. In order to treat a problem, you have to really understand where it comes from. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what is acne prone skin? Who can have it? And some of my products and best recommendations of things that I personally love to use, recommendations for you if you do have acne prone skin as well. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Lakeisha, and on this channel I post a lot of skincare, makeup, lifestyle, and hair videos. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then make sure you are subscribed. Without further ado, let's get started. Acne prone or acneic skin is a skin condition. We want to think of the skin in three basic types. You can have oily, dry, and normal skin. But they're not definitive boxes. Skin is more like a scale. And depending on the environment, depending on lifestyle, it can impact the way that your skin behaves. Now, within those three arbitrary categories, you can have conditions. These conditions include mature skin, acne prone skin, sensitive skin, eczema, rosacea, the list goes on and on. But it's one of those conditions that you just have to deal with on top of your actual skin type. Which means, yes, even if you have dry skin, you can still be acne prone. The reason why this is a little bit confusing is because acne breeds in an oily environment. If you have dry skin, you don't really have much oil, but that doesn't mean you can't be acne prone. Acne prone skin generally occurs in two ways. Number one, your skin has a very hard time getting rid of the top layer of dead skin on the surface of your face. Our skin cells renew on a 28 day cycle, which means there's always new skin coming to the surface. And as new skin comes up, you're supposed to get rid of the dead skin that's on the top in order for the new skin to breathe and thrive and act normal. But our skin has a very hard time letting go of that. So the top layer just gets stuck. You'll see this with dry skin types. If they have any flaky skin, your skin's not really getting rid of it very easily. So when this happens, products that you're applying on top of it, if you're applying an occlusive agent, if you're applying oils to your face, whatever makeup you're wearing on your face, it could actually just bind to the dead skin on your face and end up clogging your pores. This is exactly how dry skin can sometimes be acne prone as well. The second way that you can have acne prone skin has more to do with the oil that's on your face. So in general, we have a microbiome. So this is the environment in which our skin lives in. And it's a breeding ground for both good bacteria and bad bacteria. This is normal for everybody. But in people with acne prone skin, there tends to be a higher level of bad bacteria living on our skin. You've probably heard the name before, P. acneus bacteria. That's the specific bacteria that loves to feed on oil and dirt and grime and makeup and all the other stuff on your face. This is what is producing more clogged pores in your skin and allowing that bacteria to spread. So you have more acne just kind of developing everywhere. Now these two scenarios are not mutually exclusive. You can have both going on at the same time. This tends to happen with combination skin types. You have both going on at the same time, but oily skin types can have both of them happening at the same time too. And that's when you start to get inflammation in the skin because the pores are now enlarged, they're full. And this is where you'll get pustules, papules, and even cystic acne that's more on that internal layer. Having acne prone skin is not your fault. The two things that we just mentioned before have more to do with your genetics than anything that you could possibly do with your skin, which means that acne is not caused by bad hygiene, it's not caused by eating greasy foods, it's not caused by any of those things. Now these things can exacerbate the problem and make it worse, but if you have acne prone skin, it's not because you're doing anything wrong. And I want to make sure that we get rid of that stigma. You can have acne prone skin at any age. It doesn't mean that it's always going to show or reveal itself based on how you take care of your skin and where you are in your life cycle. Generally speaking, teenagers tend to have very acne prone skin because your hormones are all over the place. Because your skin is usually very oily, you'll have a lot of acne on your forehead. That's what puberty does to you. Women particularly tend to have a lot of acne as well. Um, because obviously we have periods, our hormones affect our oil production, it affects our skin, it affects our stress levels, and all of that changes the way that our body behaves. And that would also induce having acne. Men also tend to have acne prone skin in their 20s as well. It's not exclusive to women. Over the age of 30, you can still have acne based on your hormone fluctuations. All the way up to your 40s and 50s, you can still have acne on your skin. With mature skin, you can have acne prone skin as well. It's just far less common because a condition of having mature skin is that you have more dry skin. 
so it's not as common. I would always recommend going in with a double cleanser, regardless if you're wearing makeup or not. SPF needs to come off your face at the end of the night. For dry skin types, you'll want to use a makeup removal that is very moisturizing to the skin. This is the Pharmacy Green Clean Makeup Melt Away Cleansing Balm. This is one of my favorites. Now, I would say that oily skin types, combination skin types, y'all can still use this as well. I am combination and this is one of my favorites, so yeah. You just have to make sure that you're washing it off properly. If the cleansing balm is a little bit too thick for you, you can also try oil cleansers. My personal favorite is the Innisfree Green Tea Oil Cleanser. One of my absolute favorites. It's such a light oil and it gets everything off. And you can also try using a micellar water. This is the one from La Roche-Posay. This one's actually for sensitive skin. Regardless of which method I'm using, I always go back in with a micellar water just to make sure that I get all the product off my hairline. For cleansers, one of my favorites is the Kale Green Tea Spinach Vitamins Superfood Cleanser from Youth to the People. The antioxidants in here and the green tea specifically is what's going to calm and soothe the skin and really get rid of it inflammation. If you have oily skin or combination skin, this will be a really good one because it's a jelly and it will help to get rid of some of the oil. For dry skin, you may want something a bit creamier. One of my favorites is the Nutrium Niacinamide Cleansing Gelée. Um, this is a 3% niacinamide blend. It has no fragrance, so it won't be irritating your skin. You can use this if you have combination or oily or whatever your skin type is, but this one specifically for dry skin, it's going to be very moisturizing. It's not going to be stripping to your skin, very calming, and it doesn't have any of that BHA, which can tend to dry out dry skin types, but it has the niacinamide, which would be really good for the skin too. Another one of my favorites is this one from CeraVe. This is their salicylic acid cleanser. Really good option for people with oily skin as well as combination. And the last one is the La Roche-Posay Efficlar Purifying Foaming Gel. And the reason why I like this one specifically is because it targets the P. acneus bacteria on your skin, which really just helps to get rid of that bacteria and stop it from even forming acne on your skin. So this is more of a preventative thing that I like. Moving on to toners, you can opt for a toner that is an exfoliator. Two of my favorites, this is the Paula's Choice 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. This one's really simple. It is very strong in my personal opinion, but it's a really good one. It's very simple. It doesn't have a lot of ingredients. It has a lot of green tea and a lot of humectants in here that's going to be very hydrating to your skin. The next one is the Sun By Me AHA BHA PHA, which is a really good option for oily skin as well. Um, I would say that pretty much every skin type can use it, even if you have dry skin this may be a good option once again you don't have to use these every single day and i wouldn't recommend using more than one exfoliator in your routine so if you're going to go for the cleanser switch to a hydrating toner and if you're going to go for the exfoliating toner just use a hydrating cleanser i actually tend to just use aloe vera as my toner because it's very soothing like we said before this is the one from nature republic you guys have heard me talk about this for forever this will not only just soothe your skin and calm your skin but it will also provide you with the hydration you need to make sure that your oil stays at bay and if you do have dry skin types aloe vera is really good to replenish that hydration because you tend to have a very hard time keeping hydration in the skin moving on to serums a really good one for acne prone skin is the versa just breathe clarifying serum this one has willow bark which is essentially a salicylic acid and this would be really good for getting rid of the pore action with um, a bit of hydration so you're going to get some of those humectants in here as well another one i love is this niacinamide from the inky list niacinamide is one of my favorite ingredients because not only does it help with oil control it brightens your skin so if you have dark spots it will help to heal that too it plumps the skin it hydrates the skin and it just it just heals your skin in a way that pretty much nothing else does other than retinol of course but it just really really does so much for the skin and this one's a really good one from the inky list because it's very inexpensive i do like the one from the ordinary as well but i found recently that one has started to break me out for some reason so i switched to this one and it's been doing very good things for me it's always good to have some soothing treatments and ingredients on hand just in case your skin decides to misbehave we want to treat the inflammation so one of my favorites you guys have heard me talk about before is the claire's midnight blue calming cream this is so amazing if i ever have any irritation on my skin this calms everything all the way down and it just allows my skin to just regain normality i guess you would say um i'll use this whenever i've tried new products or even after i've exfoliated to prevent my skin from getting inflamed another product that i recently started using is the Sika repair from dr jerk 
And this one's a tiger grass calming balm as well. This one is the gel, um, the gel cream, because I do have combination skin, but you can also get a, um, just the regular cream that's a bit thicker if you have dry skin, which will really help to calm your skin down too. I already name dropped retinol, <laughs> but it's a very good option for people with acne prone skin because it really does help to rebuild your skin. It's the only proven ingredient that actually rebuilds your skin cells. So if you're someone who has dry skin or you, you've never tried retinol before and you don't really know how your skin's gonna react to it, because let me tell you, the purging spell that you're gonna get from retinol is gonna be a lot. Um, so definitely start with a small percentage first. A really good one is this uh, squalane and phyto retinol serum from Biosense. This one's good because it is a plant derivative. So it's not the actual retinol, but it's a plant that mimics the effects that retinol gives on your skin. Um, another good one, I don't have it with me anymore, but Naturium has a really good one too that incorporates both retinol and Bacuchiol, which is another plant derivative of retinol. Really, really good and very gentle on the skin too. That one I did get a bit of purging, but it went away pretty quickly and there was no redness or irritation on the skin either. If you have more oily skin or your skin can tolerate something a little bit stronger, then you may want to opt for this one from La Roche-Posay. It's their Effeclair Adapalene Gel 0.1% Acne Treatment. This one is so good. I've been using this for like four months now and my skin feels amazing. I think I did purge for maybe a week or two using this product, but over four months, my skin has completely started to look better and I love this thing so much. You really don't need to use a lot, especially to the front line, you don't want to use a lot because it can be very drying and irritating to your skin. It is a very irritating ingredient. So you want to make sure that if you're using this, you use some of those calming ingredients to calm the skin down. So one of my new favorites for acne spot treatments is drying lotions with sulfur. This is the one from Mario Badescu. Uh, it's their drying lotion. It's not my favorite product, but I love the sulfur, of course. Sulfur Honestly, when benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid doesn't work, sulfur comes in real clutch and I kind of rotate between the, tr the three of them. Like I said, I don't want to use one for too long because it becomes ineffective, but this one's really good if you just have a pimple on your skin. It just came up, it's red, it's irritated. Put a little bit of this on it. Another interesting spot treatment that you can try is actually an acne patch. So this is the Cake Microneedle Spot Darts, and this is a new find for me. I've been loving acne patches and I was looking for something a little bit less expensive than the one from Zitstega. This is, this is a good option. The main ingredients in here are hyaluronic acid and salicylic acid. So that would be really helpful for unclogging the pore, unclogging the actual blocked pimple. And then it has the hydrating ingredients that will just make sure that you're not drying out the pimple to the point where you feel uncomfortable. We talked a lot about moisturizers, so let's actually talk about them. If you have more oily skin, you may want a gel moisturizer. The one that I really like is the one, um, the AHA, BHA, PHA, Sun by Me. Um, a gel because it's the same actives that I said before. I actually have a review video on the line, um, but it's one of my favorites. It really just helps to moisturize without getting too oily or too greasy on your skin. Another one of my favorites is the one from CeraVe. This is their daily moisturizing lotion for normal to dry skin. Like I said, I have combination skin. This works well for me. I don't find that it clogs my pores. It leaves me feeling very moisturized without feeling oily. So I like this one a lot. If you do need something a bit thicker, and I'd recommend using this one with retinol. This is the First Aid Beauty um, Ultra Repair Cream. It's very thick, but it's not too thick to the point where it leaves your skin oily and greasy. It has like a... a a soft touch finish so not shiny but it has a very soft touch natural finish to your skin for oily skin type it may be a bit too thick for you it just depends on how you like your moisturizers for oils my favorite oil for acne prone skin has to be squalane oil squalane oil is another amazing antioxidant that has great properties for the skin helps to soothe the skin it helps to combat um the the, the irritation as well as it does help to regulate the oil production on your skin too. So this is the one from The Ordinary. This is their plant-derived squalane. And then I have this one from Naturium as well. Both great options um, for uh, oils if you do need something a little bit more. Last but not least, like we said before, get an SPF. So one of my favorites is the True Secret Mineral 100 Calming Sun Cream. Now this one is a mineral 
SPF, of course, which is great for anytime when you're actually breaking out on your skin. It has a, a lot of soothing and calming ingredients that's gonna help combat any further irritation on your skin too. Another one of my favorites, this one is actually a chemical SPF, but I found because it's so lightweight, if I'm not breaking out, this is one that I would normally wear. This is the CeraVe Ultra Light Moisturizing Lotion with 30 SPF. Very good, no fragrance, very lightweight. I, I really do enjoy this one. And last but not least, a new favorite of mine is the Black Girl Sunscreen 30 SPF. This one's amazing because it has the avocado and the jojoba oil in there as well. And it is very moisturizing. I would say that this one is a little bit thicker, so it's gonna leave your skin a little bit shiny, but it does dry down. And you can also put translucent powder on it if you do want something a little bit more dried down. This one would be amazing for anybody with combination or dry skin. Um, and it also has no fragrance, leaves no casts on your skin whatsoever. I love this stuff. So that was a lot of products, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some information from it. Comment down below and let me know if you have any other acne prone skin questions or product recommendations that you found really work for you. I would love to hear more because I am a product junkie. Remember to click over here to see some of my previous videos. As always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, because I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye!